On this episode of the Bronze Medalist Podcast, we talk about The Greatest Generation by The Wonder Years, the band, not the show. Yes, not the band. The, no, the band, not the... Oh, I watched the show. Oh, shit. Well, oh, well. this is going to be weird. Okay. Hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning in with tuning your in? old-timey you internet radio to <laughs> another episode of the Bronze Medalist Podcast. I'm Kale. I'm OJ. And today we are going to be talking about my very favorite album, I guess, of all time, technically speaking. So we're not doing metal this month necessarily. Yeah. This month is uh, just, uh, hey, whatever you like, bring it on by. So mm-hmm. this week and... The next time it comes back over to me, I decided, hey, this is my favorite thing, so we're going to talk about that uh, as much as humanly possible. So yeah, I chose for this one the uh, uh, 2013 album from The Wonder Years called The 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 Greatest Greatest Generation. Generation. So yeah, we'll we'll get to talking about that a little bit later, I guess. Uh, I didn't prepare topics because I, I... just wrote a shitload of, of notes about wow, the you album. A, you got a lot of notes. I do have a lot of notes. There's more. There's a whole nother sheet on the on the backside. Wow, but uh, that's a lot of notes. Yeah, it's been. Uh, <laughs> I, I decided I, I should distill some of my thoughts into things <laughs> so I remember to exactly. rehave those thoughts later. You don't want to have this opportunity and not fully grasp it. Yeah, not embrace the opportunity. Firmly grasp it. <laughs> Firmly grasp it. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I, uh, I, 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 <laughs> I, I went uh, as hard on this as I as I conceivably could. But, hard to uh, paint, as they say. Yes, um, the basket. Yes, yeah, basketball. Okay. I went. I went hard in the motherfucking paint. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, this week was weird. Was it weird for you? It was a weird week. It was a strange week. Yeah, it uh, was like slow ish. Yeah, and, and it just—I don't know—it it felt like a weird week. Not a lot to do this week. Yeah, we, uh, and, and that's mostly just work stuff. But yeah. like we, we're sort of teetering on the edge of spring. I think this this coming week is we're gonna have 30s for the first time in oh, forever. It's gonna so be that'll hot. Be, yeah, <laughs> we will be uh, having heat stroke. You know, <laughs> getting above freezing. We I can't handle my, that anymore. Wear my tank top and flip flops. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's it going to have nice weather coming up, and I'm I'm excited for that because, as we talked about last week, God, I can't fucking wait for oh, spring. Ugh. For spring and for summer. And I, I, I'm spring is my least favorite season because it's sloppy. Yeah, spring in North Dakota is really ugly and nasty look. I mean, that's just the entire northern U.S., I'm right. sure. But like it's it's just gross for the first couple of months, especially if you if you live in a place where it doesn't heat up quickly. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's a very slow build up. In, it's a slog. Yeah, it's a slog in North Dakota, and it starts out with there being dirt and sand everywhere, and it's still too cold for the leaves to come back, and the yeah. grass is still brown, and it's just it's it's unpleasant for uh, about a month and a half until things finally start to green up again towards the middle of May. Mm-hmm. Middle, then, middle to end of May, yeah. Yeah, and then it finally starts happening, and it's like over the course of a week, suddenly all the leaves are back and everything is green, and it's Yeah, pretty. and it's spring, it's spring, it's spring, summer! Yeah, <laughs> basically. Uh, although sometimes we have a, sort of like an extended June where... Uh, an extended June. I mean, it's always 31 days, yeah, but... Uh, 30 days. 30 days. I, I never remembered that. I never memorized that mnemonic 30 device. days have September, April, June, and November. All the rest of 31. Except for February. Except for February, because fuck February. Well, <laughs> what do you have against... Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. No, 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 hey, not, I wasn't going to okay. go there. Uh, but, uh, yeah... So it's it's I'm I'm excited for for the changing of seasons if if nothing else did than to get rid of all this goddamn snow. I want to get my motorcycle out. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Get your motorcycle out. Get some riding in. Get my motor running. Head out get on the your, highway. Yeah, looking for adventure. Whatever comes my way. I yeah I couldn't think of the rest <laughs> of the song. 
Uh, let's see. We're recording this on a Friday because mm-hmm. uh, I had I had a couple Dungeons and Dragons engagements this week, mm-hmm. uh, and so I, I one of them is hopefully going to be on a, a different night. Uh, you know, coming because right, it ended. It, yeah, it ended up being on a Wednesday tonight, and I was like, "Oh shit, that's normally when we do this thing." But I didn't want to make everybody else wait, so uh, yeah, it was. I don't know. Uh, hopefully, hopefully it'll go a little bit better. A little, a little more gooder. A little bit more well, gooder. Well, you I don't have to know. get up early tomorrow. Yeah, that was the uh, that's the other thing I guess is on my plate right now. I have to I have to get up early tomorrow. It's my weather weekend, mm-hmm. and that's always a uh, fucking joy. <laughs> get up at well, I get up at five fifty. Five fifty? Yeah. Really? When I have to, I live across town, and I get up at like six thirty to do it. Yeah. I I I like to get up, get it done as quickly as possible, and then mm-hmm. leave. But I don't necessarily like to cut it close. Right. I'm sure I could. Uh, get up a little bit later and and still get it done in time but i i don't feel like doing that yeah yeah uh, i can understand uh, I mean, it's nine forecasts you have to do it. yeah so i don't uh, i don't want to put any extra stress on myself and then once that is done uh we have a live remote that's going on after that that i'm running the board for so yeah and i'm going to be at that event okay i'm going to be i'm not going to be doing the live yeah. There, but I'll be I'll be hanging up probably drinking it, beer. Yeah, it's a motorcycle show, so yeah. you're gonna be, <laughs> so be hanging there. out, having some fun. <laughs> I love me some motorcycles. That's I mean, motorcycles are cool. I just I I don't think I could ride one. I mean, I know I could ride one. I don't sure. think I don't know if I would ever want to commit myself to riding one mm-hmm. because the uh I feel like the learning curve for me would involve a lot of falling over and a, a lot of pain. You know, it's not as bad as you would think. You know, you I, haven't seen me ride a bike. <laughs> you haven't seen me ride a bike either, man. <laughs> I, I guess. I I have barely, barely enough balance to ride a bicycle. It's it's. Of course, I have seen you walk. Yeah, <laughs> I sometimes almost fall over just standing still. <laughs> 100% sober, I'll just uh-huh. be standing near something and fall into it because apparently my body can't even resist the gravity of <laughs> of an object that's nearby. You know, the earth. Well, the earth, but also whatever gravity field the, you know, wall of the cubicle section at work is generating that's par- apparently pulling me towards it. And I slam into it and almost knock all the fucking awards over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Way to sort of half mention. By the way, we are an award-winning yeah, uh, we have all broadcast kinds of facility. Awards. That's right. We'd have more, but they stopped giving them out. They did because they ran out of money. But yeah, I I have barely enough balance to even stand. So I maybe it's it certainly isn't helped by the fact that I don't ride my bicycle very often anymore sure. because I don't I don't have space for it up mm-hmm. here anymore. I used to when I had a garage. So it's down in Washburn is where your bicycle is. Yeah, my bike is down in Washburn and it's also very old and now a little bit too small for me. Sure. Um I got it when I that bicycle when I was probably like 13. Really? So it's like a huffy? Does it have no, like tassels on the No, it's it's more of a Is there a card in the spokes? Uh, no, it's <laughs> a a a bit more of a proper like mountain bike type. Okay. But um it's not uh the tires especially are not all that good for pavement. Mm-hmm. But I grew up on a gravel road, so I didn't I didn't I couldn't really have pavement tires or else sure. it would have been a pain in the ass to ride my bike anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um so I think if I'm going to get back into riding my bike, I just need to get a new bike. Uh, cuz that one is is old and it's Otherwise, it would just need some repairs. Well, somebody's and, birthday's coming up soon. Yeah, as Chris would say. <laughs> oh God, we don't need to get into that. But <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm the big old two three is coming up here on the twenty second. So the twenty second of yeah. March. Yep. Last year was my golden birthday, and I don't really even remember what I did. I think I just got drunk. <laughs> That's why you don't remember. I Perhaps. I think. I, I think more more so it had to do with just it not being all that special. I think we just went out to the bars, and uh, that's had not a when you got kicked time. out, is it? No, no, no. no. Okay, that was right. that was the uh, beginning of the summer before my senior year. Okay, uh, of college was when that happened. Of college, yeah. <laughs> now I got kicked out of a bar. <laughs> I got kicked out of a bar because I was nineteen. <laughs> 
No, wait. The, the summer before your senior year. 17. <laughs> Fuck, I don't know. He graduated know. when he was 20. <laughs> I graduated when I, when I was 20, but I completed college in like a year and a half. <laughs> Very weird priorities. It's just where I fit in, you know. <laughs> when Kale does it, he does it like all at once. Yep, yep. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I've told that story on on this podcast at some point. Not with you, but I think I told it with Jaron. Mm-hmm. But you know that story. And yeah, listeners, you can find it somewhere. I don't even remember. It's on a podcast somewhere. It's on a podcast somewhere. But uh, yeah, just uh, if you're ever really drunk at a bar, make sure you really pay attention to the signs on the bathrooms. <laughs> That's just solid advice. You don't want to end up in the ladies' room. You don't want to end up in the ladies' room. and Unless you're a lady. Have, unless you are a lady. Yeah. And uh, have a bouncer grab you and say, all right, buddy, time for you to go home. <laughs> he wasn't mean or anything. He was mm-hmm. just kind of like, this guy has been overserved. He should probably go. And then you found your way home. I didn't find my way home. I found my way to my roommate, and he found my way home. <laughs> That's right. He he grabbed me by the the bouncer grabbed me by the arm and said, "Who's your ride?" And I went, "He's over there." <laughs> and he took me over to Leaf, and Leaf was like, "What the fuck happened to you? <laughs> what did you do? You were gone for two minutes." <laughs> and I was like, "I don't remember." And yeah, that's the, I think that's the only time I've really been like blackout drunk. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been very drunk many times, but sure. uh, that's the only time that I think I've ever blacked out and it was and that I was you know of that I know of that was all that I was also utterly incoherent for it was not a good night and it was a really really bad morning uh, so, so yeah. there's that alcohol is dangerous kids I say as I <laughs> take a take a the- pull of this moose drool from Big Sky Brewing Company it's a nice brown ale a nice brown I like it that's like it's just a brown ale yeah it's not like, you know, they don't dress it up anything. It's just, this is an ale. It's brown. Mm-hmm. Like most beers, it's just, it's a bit darker. What else do you want? <laughs> what what else do you want? It's yeah. a dark beer. It's a dark beer. Big Sky is pretty great. They make mm-hmm. a lot of uh, really good craft beers. Obviously, they're out of Montana. Yes, in Missoula. Uh. Well, not obviously. Not everyone knows that Montana is the Big Sky state. I suppose, yeah. Not everyone has all of these state mottos memorized. <laughs> I don't know. I think if you listen to this podcast, you probably know more about... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. it's There's a distinct possibility you know at least a few. Uh, here in the Flicker Tail State. Here in... Yeah. Are we we're at, the Peace are we, Garden State. Yeah, we're the Peace Garden State. The uh, Flicker Tail State is... What is the Flicker Tail Isn't state? this also the Flicker Tail State? I, mean, I don't fucking know. We have the Flicker Tail Gardens at the state fairgrounds, so true. that's and, yeah. why, maybe. Well, the Flicker... No... No, the western meadowlark is the state bird. Yeah, that's true. What is our state? A flicker tail is not a bird. What, uh, <laughs> what is our state mammal? Is that a bison? Oh, man, I don't know. I think it might be the flicker tail. The, what is the flicker tail? The, fl- the, the state mammal? Yeah, what is a flicker tail? Oh, it's like a, a little like a beaver kind of looking thing. Like a little ground squirrel. Okay. Is like a like a chipmunk type. It's a rodent. Dealio? You've, you've seen the, the dude at the fair who wears the flicker tail costume that, that Big Mike used to threaten all the time. I thought he was just a furry. <laughs> he's not associated with the state fair at all. He just he's likes just to... <laughs> he's just a furry that likes to go out into uh, you know ninety five degree heat in the middle of July and walk around a, a fairgrounds outdoors for six hours. That's what I thought he was all about. No, no, it turns out that's not true. <laughs> I stand corrected. <laughs> All right, do we want to get into it? All right, it looks like you got a lot of notes. Yeah, so I, think I, better. I, I didn't print off uh, uh, a, a sheet, to the, the Wikipedia sheet for this album, just because I, I know enough about it, not necessarily about the production, but I, I certainly have enough to talk about without going sure. into, without reading off the list of like, they started recording in November, and then they were done, and then they did this. <laughs> uh, I believe Steve Everett was the uh, producer on the album. The engineer. As, for, or the engineer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, he also did the album previous to this, was which is the very wordy Suburbia, I've Given You All and Now I'm Nothing, uh, or just more simply, Suburbia. Suburbia. Uh, and that is that is a fantastic album. You guys should check it out as well. I just decided that um, 
The Greatest Generation is sort of the starting point of really what the Wonder Years is today Mm -hmm. in 2019. Um, they sort of they started this band while they were still in college. They put out one album while they were in college that was called "Get Stoked on It," <laughs> and it was a very very pop punk album. Sure, it was and not very well produced either. <laughs> uh, I I might add that's that's notable. I think I I actually I don't think I've ever listened to "Get Stoked on It" all the way through. Really, it's just it is so so different from. Wh- how I know them to be mm-hmm. that I I just I don't really care for it all that much. Where their discography starts for me is the EP "Won't Be Pathetic Forever" that came out in two thousand nine, right? I believe as they were graduating college, mm-hmm. and then their LP that came out after that was uh, "The Upsides," which starts out with a very apt "My Last Semester" and sort of talks about sure. that immediate experience of coming out of college and trying to figure out where the fuck all your friends have gone and uh, sort of the ennui from that. Suburban ennui has really been the the, The theme theme for Mm -hmm. um, sort of a trilogy of albums that started with the upsides, includes Suburbia, and then wraps up, I think, very neatly with with The Greatest Generation. Mm -hmm. Sort of a, a, a trilogy of albums that follow the the same themes of being sad and lonely and and there's a lot of that on this yeah there there's a fair amount of uh, of that on this and it by the end starts to grow out of that and it it sort of lays uh, uh, plants the seeds of the next two albums which is Dan nicknamed soupy because his last name is Campbell sure uh, uh, is soupy just learning to let go of all the self-reflection a little bit mm-hmm. and and looking around him a little bit more about at, at what's going on and, and looking outward instead of inward so much. Mm-hmm. Um, and really the, the album that we're talking about tonight is sort of the process of coming to that conclusion that that is the right thing to do. Uh, that's, that's how I feel. So there's, there's uh, a couple of themes that I wrote down that I think rap or like describe it most succinctly. Um, and it sort of separates it into acts almost. Mm-hmm. Um, the first theme that I think is prevalent on the on the first few songs is the idea of growing older but not growing up, sure, and not moving on. Um, I, I wrote down like stuff for uh, track by track. So like the first few songs, you've got the intro, which is there, there, uh, which is mainly the way I see it is uh, about like failing a significant other and. You know, realizing that you're you're not there for them, and you haven't been awake, um, and you haven't been you haven't really been as attentive as you should have been, mm-hmm. uh, and it's just a lot of apologizing and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, what what kind of man am I? I'm in an airport. And, uh, that's and that's not this song. That's that's not that song. No, that that's... is that is later in the album. We'll get right. to that. Um, that's dismantling summer that comes up. Yes. Uh, the I think there there is really about being broken and not being able to fix yourself and. You know, sort of the the fallout of that realization and sort of being left behind because, uh, fuck, I don't know what to do about myself, so I guess you should leave. Uh, the thesis statement for the album, though, I think really comes on the next song, which mm-hmm. is called Passing Through a Screen Door. And, yeah, that is really the song that I think most embodies the idea of growing up but not uh, – or, or growing older but not growing up. Mm-hmm. Um, him feeling like everybody's leaving him behind. You know, he's turned he's just turned 26 and he's looking around him and seeing that all of his classmates and his cousins have all They've got kids gotten married and, yeah. and they're having kids and they're settling down and they're starting lives uh, and, and being productive members of society. And, and what, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. You know, what, Jesus <laughs> yeah. Christ, did I fuck up? Yep. Um, Which is an actual lyric in there. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, while everybody else is coming home at night and uh, sleeping with their loved ones and all that. He's on a 40 hour ride home from a gig mm-hmm. and just listening to the radio and, and feeling like the whole world is passing him by. Uh, and it's like, why, what am I doing? Why am I here? Is this what I should be doing? Mm-hmm. Am I meant to be doing this? Um, the next song is we could die like this, which it sort of also encapsulates another one of the themes that is more prevalent throughout the entire album, which is uh, you can never go home again. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's really about nostalgia and thinking about 
uh, where you grew up and that that desire sometimes that the worst parts of your life when you you desperately want to go back there but you can't you can't no yeah nothing's ever going to be like it was when you were a kid you can't go back to it uh cuz it wasn't <laughs> what it was like when you were a kid wasn't actually what it was which is a theme that comes up a little bit later on the album as well right it's all about your perception as yeah as you were when you were younger yeah the the way you perceived it is not the way it actually was right uh so the next one that comes up is uh the song that you mentioned earlier and the ideas on it called dismantling summer yeah which is really about letting down your loved ones and your families because you're selfish because you're going off and doing your own thing and mm -hmm. you're not paying attention to them um and so that specifically is i believe about his uh, one Which of his, his grand grandfather, yeah, his grandfather, yeah. Um, who is uh, almost a main character on their most recent album, Sister Cities. Mm -hmm. But uh, his a grandparent. I'm not sure if it was the same one on Sister Cities, but a grandparent uh, is in the hospital, and he's going to visit that grandparent and and doing things and uh, you know trying his best. But then he's got to leave and he's got to go back out on tour and leave that behind and he's just thinking you know if i'm here about to travel the world you know sitting and waiting in an airport and you're still back there in a hospital bed and i'm not there with you mm -hmm. with the rest of my family what kind of man am i what kind of man does that make me does that make me a grown-up yeah does that make me a grown-up does yeah. that make me a good person or would a real would a real grown-up with a real job be back there with the people that are supposed to matter the most to him mm -hmm. Uh, and that's the the conflict on that song. Uh, the next one that comes up is The Bastards, The Vultures, The Wolves, um, which is really about sort of almost violent self-examination and like looking at everything and saying, fuck that, fuck that. I'm like, like just being really angry at yourself and coming to a resolution at the end that he's just going to fucking fight it out. Sure. It's just going to turn into a slugfest. The song wraps up. The whole last minute of the song is uh, talking about how I um, he, he visualizes his problems as the devil being on his front porch with a rifle aimed straight at him. And he's just saying, I came here looking for a fight and I'm going to fucking have one. Sure. And so the last, the whole last minute of the song is just this building crescendo. Of, what, what is he, he doesn't say, I came here looking for a fight. He says, I came here. Or I came in looking I for came, a fight. I yeah. came here looking for a fight. And that just repeats over and right. over and over again until finally uh, it just wraps up with, I came here and boom, song's over with. And then we lead into kind of the, the centerpiece of the album to me, mm -hmm. and it uh, one of my favorite <clears throat> songs on the album. It isn't my favorite, but one of my favorite songs on the album is "Devil in My Bloodstream," which mm -hmm. it starts out as the softest song, well, one of the softest songs it's on the record. Acoustic guitar, uh, yeah, yeah, acoustic yeah. guitar and piano, right? Um, and it describes him going to the funeral of his great grandfather uh, in Missouri, and uh, his great grandfather, uh, to us anyway, the listener. Uh, he describes his great grandfather as something of a war hero. He led a very full life. He was a part of the greatest generation right. who grew up in the Great Depression and fought in World War II. And he managed to get a hold of his great grandfather's memoirs and started reading through them. And he started to realize that despite all of that, despite all of the things we think of the greatest generation as, is, you know, working hard and never complaining and all of that and storming beaches and doing everything. Mm -hmm. His great grandfather had a lot of the same problems that he did. Well, sure. They were not all that different. And, uh, that the devil in his bloodstream is depression and self doubt and anxiety. And he's realizing that he's got the same thing. It's, uh, you know, it's the same deal. It's the same problems. And, um, the song sort of ramps up with him saying, I bet I, you know, before he comes to this realization that he's got the same problems, he says, I bet I'd be a fucking coward mm -hmm. thinking I could never do what he did. I'd never have the strength to do that. And talking the beginning of the song, uh, he mentions sort of a metaphor of two blackbirds on a highway sign are laughing at me at four in the morning, hmm. like sleeping on the side of the road and something's just out there nagging at you mm -hmm. trying to get you to wake up. And I think that to him is depression and anxiety or the two blackbirds. Mm -hmm. And he also talks about uh, a war drum being played out of time 
and sort of the 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 very millennial problem of us not having any sort of big challenge that we have to face. We don't have a huge clear enemy. Mm-hmm. And I think that really wraps up with the end of the song, which is I want to be strong, but mm-hmm. it's not easy anymore. It's easy to be strong when you have something very clear and very definite to fight against and to face. Right, he sings about how he doesn't know how far he's marched because... Yeah, I I don't know where I've been marching. Yeah. I, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing because it's not clear. We have We don't know what we're supposed to be fighting. It seems like there's a million things or it might be nothing. Uh, and if you grew up in the Great Depression and fought in World War II, those are two very clear obstacles to overcome. Mm-hmm. You know, you've got the Great Depression and then you have the New Deal and you, you take part in that and you work and you support your family and you don't have time to think about the other things. Mm-hmm. And then World War II happens. And who are you fighting there? Well, the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. The Nazis have taken over most of Europe and mm-hmm. they're killing people in concentration camps. We've never had a better bad guy. We've <laughs> never had a more clear enemy to be fighting on both fronts. Yeah. And as difficult as it was to do those things in the moment, I'm not trying to denigrate any of the sacrifices that our grandparents made. But, or the people that are making now. Or the or the sacrifices people yeah. are making now. But when you're when you're in the moment, you don't have a choice. You just do. Uh you know, you you because the the other choice is well, I guess I'm going to die, and uh, that you know that's it's easier to make that decision, but when you're stuck in some place where you you don't know what your enemy is, but you're told that you need to be fighting something in order to be a, a great person and to be a great man, mm-hmm. you need to be fighting for something. It's uh, there's a lot of conflict there that happens within yourself because you have no idea what you're fighting for or who you're fighting mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, because they aren't people. It isn't, it isn't an organization. It seems to be society. It seems to be everything. And there's nowhere to take a stand. Uh, so the next song that comes up is starting sort of a chapter in the album of him thinking back on how his childhood actually was, and that starts with the song Teenage Parents, mm-hmm. which is really, I think, about that realization that that everybody who goes into their 20s uh, makes, which is, for better or for good, your parents were human beings. Sure. They had their own problems. They hopefully tried their best. Uh, It didn't always go all that well, and things might not have been the best they could have been, or you might have thought they were a lot better than they actually were. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you can recognize that they are human too, and you can recognize their sacrifices because that's what they did that made you who you are now. Mm-hmm. And he's digging through his past trying to figure out, you know, where the threat is, what what the threat is, what happened, where did I go wrong? You know, my parents did all this stuff for me and and tried so hard to make it work and tried so hard to, to raise me to be a good person. Mm-hmm. But I don't feel like I am that person that they wanted me to be. What happened? When did that stop? Sure. Is what he's trying to, to figure out. The next song is really the only one that I'm not entirely sure what it's about. And really, I kind of feel like it almost doesn't belong about the album or belong on the album. Mm-hmm. The next song is Chaser. Uh, that one just seems to be more generally about like kind of I'm because he says I'm a chaser. I found stronger wins. Sort of the, the idea of leaving people behind which was explored earlier on Passing Through a Screen Door, where he describes himself as a, as an escape artist's son, most presumably talking about his dad, uh, and always looking for a way to, uh, always having a backup plan. Even when something that you have is going good, you think, well, this, this can't last. What, you know, what do I do when this finally, when shit finally hits the fan and sure. I have to leave? Um, and Chaser seems to be kind of about that as well, but it, it, it just doesn't feel... Like it's clear enough to really belong on the album, almost. It doesn't seem to fit the theme as as hard. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't fit it as hard or as clearly. Uh, and the same thing sort of goes with uh, American Religion. Um, I I don't quite know how well that one fits either. It does seem to be more about like finding a balance between your work and your friendships mm-hmm. and your own anxieties and trying to make that all work together. 
uh, because he's talking. One of the opening lines is, sorry for what's in the magazines, perhaps suggesting maybe he said something in an interview or uh, said something in one of their songs that pissed off one of their friends back home or something like that. And him basically apologizing and saying, hey, I'm just I'm just writing all this shit down and getting it out because this is my job and this is what I do. And this is what I feel like I have to do. This is not where he he sings about how he doesn't believe there's a God. That is uh, the next one, I believe. That is, mm, nope, not quite. Uh, That comes up in a little bit. That's Madeline. Uh, Oh, right, that is Madeline. Um, That's also a soft starting song. That one is an entirely acoustic song. Yeah. Um, uh, The next one before Madeline, though, is called A Rain Dance in Traffic. And that one is basically about just saying, fuck it, I'm I'm about to fucking lose it. (laughs) And, and desperately trying to to wake yourself up to avoid the oncoming train of a mental breakdown and, and just trying to wake yourself up and be the person that you used to be that was happy. Mm-hmm. But you can't go home again. You can't Once again, the, there's that theme. You can't be the person you were, and he's he's desperately trying to, to do that. One of the lines in there is, uh, I used to, um, I was just happy to be a contender. I was just aching for anything. Uh, I think that's on that song. I'm trying to remember if uh, I used to have such steady hands, but now I can't keep them from shaking. I think that's on a rain dance in traffic, and mm-hmm. it's just sort of about like, man, what happened to that guy that I used to be? Why can't I be strong like that anymore? What mm-hmm. went wrong? Madeline is sort of him starting to turn a corner and and realizing, hey, it, it is time to wake up because... There is this person in my life. There is this. I I assume a cousin, maybe a sister. I I don't really know if he has siblings. Are they dating? I don't think song? no. Uh, I I I don't believe that is a significant other or anything. I think she's either a good friend or a family member. Ah. Um. And uh, you know something has happened to her. There's a line where it's I know you want to let the bottles in. Uh, mm-hmm. Dealing with alcoholism or something like that, and and realizing that he has to wake up so he can help her, sure, because he feels like he can, and that's where the line. Uh, I don't think there's a god. I don't think that there's someone coming to save us, but I don't think that's the worst news of today. Right. <laughs> I don't is... think the fact that there's that there's no higher power is the worst thing that's uh, that's happening to us right now. Right. I think we've got bigger fish to fry, uh, and. Yeah, it's you, you got to wake up and help someone the only way you can. It might not be pretty. That's not exactly a pep talk. Like, hey, there's no God. You're we're all going to die, but whatever. That's it not exactly worse. a pep talk, yeah. but it, <laughs> it it might wake somebody up mm. a little bit and say like, "Hey, you've got fucking issues. I've got issues. We need you need to work. We need to work through this." Mm-hmm. That it, you know, it, it I guess. I get you. Uh, I get you. You get me. <laughs> so the next one is Cul de Sac, which is the penultimate track on the album. Uh, and once again, I think this this song, along with Teenage Parents, is is most succinct about the the theme of you can't go home again, mm-hmm. which is him realizing that he has to let go of someone he loves, uh, or someone he once loved, who is changed into someone that he can't love anymore. Mm -hmm. Uh, A childhood friend that has tread down such a different path that he just cannot be friends with them anymore. And I think possibly it might, he might actually be speaking to someone who is deceased uh, because there is a song on a previous album that they had written for a friend of theirs who was having a tough time. His name was, um, you have it written down there. Yeah, I do have it written down. Uh, His name was Mike Mm Poloni or Mike Pallone. Um, and they wrote a song called "We Won't Bury You" for him. It was a sort of a very, uh, a fairly soft track. Mm-hmm. Um, and he died before it came out. He had problems with drug addictions really? or with drug addiction, and so he passed away before it came out. And they ended up putting it on the deluxe edition of the Upsides. And I feel like maybe that's who he's speaking to in this song, mm-hmm. um, because he says, yeah, "You were you were there all alone on some bullshit pill bottle qu- vision quest." Hmm. Uh, and basically he's, he's lamenting the fact that he can't carry that person anymore and he can't be there for that person anymore. And that he wasn't strong enough to do that in the first place. Yeah, you, know? you couldn't, if you wanted to now, Yeah, 
if you walked me home, you'd know how weak my lungs were. I just can't carry you. Uh, and then finally, we come to the last song on the album, my favorite song on the album, and really my favorite song, period, <laughs> is I Just Want to Sell Out My Funeral. This wraps up pretty much everything on the album into a nice little bow. Kind of a reprise. It's, it's a yeah, bit. half of the song, or really more of a third of the song, the second act, I guess, is uh, a reprise of uh, mm -hmm. a number of lyrics and riffs from the you know the first twelve tracks. This is a thirteen track album. Mm -hmm. um, the you know themes from the first uh, the first twelve tracks, and it's I I love the way they do it too. It fit they all fit together mm -hmm. so well, um, and really what the song is about is realizing that your life does have a purpose. Uh, even if it's not entirely clear, your your purpose might just be being around and helping your friends and being there for other people, uh, and and learning that you have to be there for yourself first as mm -hmm. well. Um, you know, you have to accept your flaws. You have to accept the devil in your bloodstream, and you conquer it by accepting that it's gonna be there. And it'll always be there, which I think is in in the line. Uh, there's no devil on my front, or there's no devil on my shoulder. He's got a rocking chair on my front porch, but I won't let him in. Which is a, a callback, yeah, to the the devil in your bloodstream, and yeah. also to uh, I believe that was uh, bastards, vultures, and wolves, mm -hmm. um, saying like, you know what? He's there. He doesn't have. He's not pointing a gun at me anymore. He's still there, though, but I'm not going to let that motherfucker in. Mm -hmm. He's staying outside there, but it's important to remember that he's still out there. And, uh, you, you know, you can't, if you don't know he's there, you can't fight him. Uh, and the, uh, the other thing that I really wrote down was uh, basically it ties back to the, the name of the album, The Greatest Generation, which is that like if, if our generation is is facing any sort of a war, it's a war against our own mental health. Mm -hmm. Like it's like that has to be the hill that we try to conquer. That has to be the beach that we stormed, uh, that we storm. We have to fight it and we have to, uh, you know, do it for ourselves and for our friends. You don't need to be a war hero to sell out your funeral. You don't you don't need to be a war hero to have a full church or wherever your funeral is being held. Mm -hmm. You don't, you don't need that. What you need to do is just love yourself and be there for your friends, and the rest of that will come. If you're a good dude, I don't know if it really matters what, what you did. It doesn't have to be grand. It doesn't have to be big. Everybody wants to be a great person, and it's selfish. It's a selfish thing to want sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's human to want to be a great person, but it, it is a little bit selfish, and really the the truest test of a person is just doing everything you can with what life handed you and that's what the album wraps up on is is you know i i just want to know that i did all i could with what i was given um and that's where it wraps up <sighs> i talked for a long time <laughs> But look, this is my... It's your favorite album, so... These are a few of my favorite things. Now it's time to be funny again. When the Farts, bastard. boners, boobs. <laughs> so what was your favorite track on the album? My favorite track on the album, I think possibly the, the last track. The last track was, was, was the best because, I mean, they, they really did sum up the the rest of the album and they, and they took all the best parts of yeah. all the other songs and they put them into sort of one, you know, big bombast. That really, really yeah. grabs you by the scruff of the neck, and yeah, and and sort of sums up the, what you just heard. You just spent the last hour listening to. It is, in my opinion, like not just my favorite, but I think one of the best album closers out there. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, there, there are some albums that wrap up. It's like, oh, that was a good last song, but I mm -hmm. feel like the build up deserved something more. Like I think of, uh, I think of Global Warming by Gojira. That's a sure. great. That's a great last song. Great That's fantastic. Last song. Yeah. Uh, and really wraps up Mars to Sirius very mm -hmm. well. And I think this is on that caliber of like just so succinctly bringing together all of these themes uh, very, very well. Yeah. And uh, like I said, I love I love that song. I love uh, Madeline. Uh, yeah. That one really sticks out of my head. Uh, the um, 
uh, see, I don't know album titles because you know, like yeah. I said, I listen to these when, when I'm when doing you're doing dishes. dishes yeah. <laughs> uh, here, I can hand you the notebooks. The the at the start of each paragraph is the name of the song. Um, uh, the devil in my bloodstream. I really loved. Um, I really loved. What was the one? I can't read your writing. I'm sorry. Yeah, I have. I have really fucking terrible handwriting. <laughs> Oh, we could die like this. I love that song. Yeah, we could die like this. Is yeah, just I want to die in the suburbs. Mm-hmm. I want to die in. The, I want to. Yeah. I want to die in suburbs. Oper- operator, take me home. Yeah. I don't know where else to go. <laughs> I want to die in the sub. I'm gonna fucking hate myself editing this because <laughs> I have to listen to myself fucking sing. Why did I do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was having a li- like I was having a bit of a bad time when I came home from work. Like, were you work just fucking beat the shit out of me today? I don't why? know why. I don't know. I like nothing happened that was different from any other Friday, but I just felt like shit when I got home. Yeah, because I, I noticed I, when I left today, you you were like, ah, oh, I just I want this to be done. Yeah, I think it's just because I I got really in my head about this weekend and sure. having weekend weather to do, and then also having the remote and all mm. of that, and I just I I got really in my head about it. Like you lose a weekend. Yeah, it's like I'm like normally like oh weekends are great because I get to sleep in and I have the whole day to do mm-hmm. whatever I want, but I don't really get to do that all that quite as much this weekend. Really, it's really. If I were to stay up after I did weekend weather, mm-hmm. I would have actually a lot more free time sure. <laughs> than, I, than I would on a typical weekend because instead of uh, desperately attempting to sleep in until 10, I would actually have, you know, like four hours before then to do things. Yeah, see, my children look forward to whenever I, I have a weather weekend because they know that when they wake up, Dad will be up. Mm-hmm. And, Dad, you're up. Let's do stuff. Let's have bacon yeah. and eggs. Let's because they're kids, so they wake up at the ass fucking crack of dawn. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't. How did we ever do that shit? I don't. I, I don't, don't know. get it. And why? Yeah. Why? I could have been sleeping. And then apparently, when we're old as hell, we're gonna start doing that again. Yeah. Like old people always get up super early in the morning. Well, it's because you go to bed with the sunset. Yeah, you know, the, the sunset. I guess. Yeah. Old people can't help but fall asleep. <laughs> At, you know, at uh, when they're tired, it's just like, oh, I'm tired. Oh, boom, it's done. I'm over with. I'm asleep. Versus now where it's like, you know, I'm tired, but I sleep is a fucking stranger to me. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, But yeah, it's like I. I, I'm starting to get there, by the way. I'm I'm, I'm getting to that stage of my life where where I I do that. I'll I'll be standing up. Somebody will push me a little bit. What? Huh? Okay, yeah. What are we doing? (laughs) My dad has been there, I think, for about 20 years. (laughs) He can fall. He seems to be able to fall asleep just about anywhere. Well, your dad's what? 15 years older than me? I mean, Uh, yeah, my dad is going to be 61 in May. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, he, uh, uh, he can fall asleep just about anywhere. But um, he's probably asleep right now when we're recording this. <laughs> sitting in his chair. They started watching something on TV, and he's just sitting in his chair at home sleeping. See, I do that when I get home, like today. I got home from work, yeah. and the kids are at home because it's spring break. So yeah. I, they, they were, let's watch TV. Dad, okay. Wow, their spring break is a little early. Yeah. I forget I forget how like how much earlier in the month it is for, for like grade high school, school for, yeah, yeah, grade school and high school and whatnot, like. Uh, and how short their spring break is as well. It's two days, yeah. Yeah, because like in, in Plus college, spring break is like two fucking weeks. Uh, and and when, in your spring break, you would go to Mexico. That's what you would do. Yeah, I would always, you know. Or go Daytona to, Beach. I would always go to Mexico. I would always go to Florida, uh-huh. partied up with all the babes. No, I just <laughs> stayed home and <laughs> drank like always. So there you go. Maybe maybe that should be your mission for this, this weekend. Um. Because you know you're you're in your head about how it's been destroyed by the fact that you have to work. Maybe you should treat yourself to doing something that makes you happy. Well, the thing that I feel like the the thing that lately I've felt makes me happiest is like I've been just thinking about thinking a lot about being outdoors and being in nature. There you go. And but we're not there yet, though. We're not to the part that I like, which is green and trees and warmth and and light and heat and, you know, hanging out during, you know, during the summer at the lake. Sure. That's Uh. that's that's really what I like. That's where I can relax. 
Uh, that's where I feel most relaxed because when I'm at home, I have so mm. many distractions sure. that I that I end up looking at. But if I'm out there at the lake, it's just like I'm just gonna sit down and look out at the fucking water and have a beer. Facebook is on. Ah. Uh, I you know like, I love that. I, yeah. I love being anywhere that if somebody could reach me, it didn't matter. Yeah, because like, there's nothing you can do about it. So I th- like this summer I'm. I'm telling myself I'm going to take advantage of that more because Lake Skakawea is not that far away. Mm-hmm. It's an area I know really well. I spent every summer there growing up. So you know the I, southern part of the lake. Yeah. I know the northern part of the lake. Yeah, I, I know I know the southern part of the lake a little bit better. So I, I want to spend more time there because last summer I only went down once. Really? Uh, the whole time that my dad was was out there with the camper, I only Terrible. went down the once. And I could have I could have gone down way more times. I just I I don't think about it. I forget that it's there. You should go down on your motorcycle. Yeah, on the motorcycle that I have. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, yeah, I bought one for seven hundred bucks, man. <laughs> that's yeah, it's a decent point. I could I could get one, but then I'd have to learn how to ride it. Uh, it's easy. I, I keep sub- telling it you, it probably is. I keep See, telling well, you, it's easier yeah. than you think. Well, and that's the thing that my dad did at one point. In, you know, in his twenties, he was like, mm-hmm. "All right, I'm going to buy a motorcycle." I'm going to learn how to ride it. Well, I think he already knew how to ride it, but like he's like, I'm going to buy a motorcycle and I'm going to go on trips. And mm-hmm. they did. Uh, they, You know, he would go on motorcycle trips. They would go to Sturgis. They, mm-hmm. I think he one time, I feel like he drove all the way to like Vegas on his motorcycle or something. Holy shit. I don't, I, I don't, that might be entirely incorrect. It might be apocryphal. That might be <laughs> something that I'm completely misre- misremembering. I know he went to Vegas one time before mm-hmm. I was around. It, before it might not have been on the motorcycle. It might not have been on the motorcycle. I, I don't remember. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's something that could be interesting and that might be – it's something I've thought about, certainly. Like, hey, you know, I'd, I'd get a motorcycle and go on a big trip or something. Sure. But Maybe start yeah. off with a dirt bike. Maybe it's- I tried to ride a dirt bike once. Oh no! Uh, it was a tiny little like fifty cc dirt bike, and uh, <laughs> I crashed it and skinned the ever living fuck out of my knee. Oh no! Uh, it was one of one of our uh, not neighbors, I guess, but they were in the neighborhood that we that it was we a had. fifty cc. I mean, that's just barely. Not- yeah, it was. It was little. Yeah, it was one step above a razor scooter, basically. Sure, it was still gas powered, and yeah, I <laughs> I didn't understand intellectually how throttles worked at the time <laughs> and so i just kind of gunned it and it came out from you know started coming out from under me and uh just fell over and skinned the shit out of my knee because uh, i never had part of the reason why I, I don't know how to ride a motorcycle is because we never had uh toys of that caliber when we were sure. growing up i grew up in the country i grew up out of town out of city limits out in a fairly rural area but uh, we didn't have any of that stuff growing up. We didn't have dirt bikes. We didn't have ATVs. We did not have snowmobiles. None really? of that shit. Wow. Uh, we we didn't have any of that stuff. The the only thing we had was a golf cart. Uh, <laughs> and that I did drive. Sure. That I did. I did drive. But that uh, you on step occasion. on the on the on the gas pedal and it goes. We, ours was gas powered. Actually. It was gas powered. Yeah. Ours you, was was gas powered. Because I guess most of them are. Well, if if you if it's a golf cart that is at a golf course, mm-hmm. it's probably going to be electric. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, like this was this was our golf cart that <laughs> for the longest time stayed at our house, and uh, we had ramps that we would use to put it back to put it up onto the truck. Oh, I thought you were going to say that you do sweet jumps. Yeah, we do sweet <laughs> jumps on our golf cart. <laughs> no, we would we'd put it up on the truck and then when we went golfing, we would take it over to the golf course which in Washburn is only about a half mile from my house. Sure. It's it's a little bit south and across the highway. Oh, so you are not far out of town. Not not too terribly far. It was like it was like 3 miles. Okay. If that, um, it, it's not that far out of town, but it's a small town. Sure. Like you, you, you step outside, like on the, on the North side of town and it's rural. You're in the rural area and you are in a, you're in a wheat field. <laughs> there is a, there is a line of trees yeah. outside of this trailer park and there's a wheat field. <laughs> I mean, if you if you live in the Midwest, you know how that shit works. You know how that works. You've you been know, to a town like And that. your hometown was always the warning town for me. Mm-hmm. That was always, a, well, we're coming up on Washburn. Make sure you only drive 40 or you yeah. will get your ass busted. Well, it's 45. But is it 45? Yeah. No, Washburn is a fucking speed trap. Yeah. Could I have the bottle opener, please? There you go. 
Washburn is a notorious speed trap. Yeah. Uh, if you're going from Bismarck to Minot, it is. It's always like Underwood. You can usually get away with because Underwood. I don't believe you used to have. Did you used to have to slow down in Underwood? You didn't used to. You do now. Yeah, you do now. And it's the the uh, s- going back up to seventy mm-hmm. takes fucking forever because <laughs> it's like fifty five sure. and the the fifty five sign. If you're going uh, south to north, is right outside its city or like right at the city limits, mm-hmm. and so you know town is right there, right right there. You don't get back up to 70 until I, it has like to be co- like. Close to Cole Harbor. Yeah. It, <laughs> like, like it has to be about a full two miles outside of town and there's nothing. There's no reason you shouldn't be doing 75 miles an there hour. There is nothing <laughs> on either side for a, like an entire mile. There is no buildings that come within a half mile of the highway. Well, under was not really on the highway anyway. I mean, yeah. It's, it's, it's the back. town itself is, is pretty far back. There's a yeah. gas station along the highway. Right. There's a couple restaurants and that is it. Underwood, I hate Underwood. I hate Underwood. <laughs> this is a, None of this makes any sense no, to doesn't. someone this who does a, not live in central North Dakota, but I don't give a shit. This is a very North Dakota conversation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't give a shit anymore. <laughs> Are you okay, man? Do you need do you need to talk? No. <laughs> not okay. I need a hug. That's what I need. All right. Uh but yeah, we. It, uh, I don't know. I so as I said this summer, I'm hoping to to get rid of some of this 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 ennui that right, I feel. Right, because that's where we are right now. That's that's how we're all feeling. Because we just spent the last a month. I mean, all of yeah. February. There was one day in February that was above freezing. That was the first day of February. Yeah. After that, it went to shit, and it was completely just just frozen the entire time. Much of the time, like close to you know twenty below actual yeah. air temperature. And and that yeah that was basically the entire month of February. Yeah. So I'm, I uh, I I'm glad that it's heating up and mm-hmm. hopefully a, a little bit of sunshine will will do all of us some good because it's God we need it. Well, I'm gonna plug in my battery when I get home. There you go. That makes me happy. And anytime I put the the, the jumper the the jump pack on my battery, it's like okay just put a little bit of a trickle in there. Uh, get ready, old girl. Apparently We're going. apparently that's <laughs> what I'm getting for my birthday is a jump pack. <laughs> Uh, and but even before I was having car troubles, because mm-hmm. when I called my dad, he was like, "Yeah, I was thinking about getting you a jump pack for your birthday." So that's this seems like uh, apt timing. Now, is he going to get you a plug-in jump pack, or is he going to get you like just the like? I don't. Trunk I pack? don't know. Uh, it's a gift. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Borner, get him the good one. Get him, the, <laughs> spend the money because I've had the crap jump packs before, and they're. I don't want him to spend too much money. Get him the good one. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I like because when we were when they were up here last weekend, mm-hmm. uh, which is also coincidentally why the last podcast didn't go up until Sunday night at nine <laughs> because your mom and dad were in town. My mom and dad were in town on Saturday, and I forgot that that is what I do on Saturday mornings. Typically, sure. is I, I edit the podcast mm-hmm. and then put it up. Uh, so yeah, I I forgot about that, uh, and I'm sorry. It's okay. But uh, it's not a problem. It's not a problem. But yeah, they're they're like, so what do you want for your birthday? And I was like, I have no fucking. I I don't want anything. I don't want any. And my dad was like, you want booze? And it's like, you know, I've been trying to drink less. <laughs> so yes, <laughs> <laughs> certainly I do. Sure. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's I, I. The only other thing that I want is like maybe a set of metal dice for D and D. Oh, sweet! Like brass dice, uh, but you heard it here. You heard it here, folks. You heard it here. Uh, I'll make an Amazon wish list. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, because I've been getting myself birthday gifts for like the last <laughs> for like the last six months, basically. Well, yeah, you got a new computer. You got a new chair. You yeah. got. Uh, Hookers, the, yeah, the yeah, all the hookers and blow, all the hookers and blow. You've been buying, yeah. The new chair was basically a, a birthday gift to myself. So, uh, it's a nice chair. It is a nice chair. I wish it was a little bit bigger, mm-hmm. uh, but it's too late to send it back. So, I wish it was a little bit taller. I wish I was a baller. I wish I had a girly who looked good. I would call her. Sorry, it's it's a rap song from the nineties. 
<laughs> I figured. I apologize for that. I figured it was a rap song from. The, I'm <laughs> sorry if that picked up there. I've been playing with the bottle caps in front of me. <laughs> what time is it? I don't know. I have no idea. Oh, here, take a look. Oh, it's seven fifty-seven. All right. That seems. It seems like we. Did you say fifty-seven? Seven fifty-eight now. Seven firty-eight now. So yeah, we probably been talking for about 55 minutes or something, something like, like that. that so probably about time for us to uh, wrap this up thank you all for i guess indulging me thank you oj for indulging me and that's my, cool hey man my favorite album i'm um, here for you okay and i enjoyed this i thoroughly yeah. actually enjoyed this album so yeah it's i and it would be I, the second time i've actually listened to it the first time okay. i listened to it i was i, I didn't because oh met's gonna be metal because kale kale yeah. look this metal. is what kale likes this is what kale and i listened to him like this this is pop punk. What am I what yeah, going on? This is Kale's favorite album. So I listened to it all the way through. This time I listened to it going in yeah. knowing what I was getting into. Well, how many times do I have to say I'm an emo kid at heart? <laughs> like, like that's why this appeals to me. Uh, and so I think we will talk a little bit more about the Wonder Years next time uh, it swings around to me at the sure. end of the month. Um, next week. Yeah, next week, though, we're doing... I'm going to make notes like this on the... <laughs> Do it. Do it. I dare you. Because I can. Please, please. Because before, before I was into metal, I was into new wave music. <laughs> I was a waver kid. I loved new wave. And I loved Duran Duran. <laughs> so that's who we're talking about next week. Duran fucking Duran. <laughs> the album will be Arena, their live Arena album. Arena by Duran Duran. Uh-huh. I'm excited for this. <laughs> this will be the most different thing we've listened to so far, I right. think. There's some uh, great musicianship on this. I, I'm sure there is. Yeah. It's you know, people didn't fuck around in the eighties. They didn't. Uh like it's it might have been poppy as hell, but there was always some some great shit going on. Mm-hmm. Uh so yeah. The I, guitar player was actually brilliant. I believe you. Believe it or not. I'm not familiar enough with Duran Duran to confidently say that, but I, I believe you. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's that's next week is Duran Duran Arena, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then the week after that, I guess I I don't know if I hmm, doing two albums. I, I feel like that might be too much. I don't All know. Right. I feel like I have less to say about both of them. They're both good, but like I feel like I don't have quite as much to say about them. Well, give them both a spin anyway. Yeah, I I don't know. I've I've been waffling back and forth about switching it though. About about bringing something else besides the Wonder Years because I kind of I got it out of my system. <laughs> I got it out of my system. I still recommend you listen to No Closure to Heaven and and uh, Sister Cities, but okay. I I think maybe I got Wonder Years out of my system, so I might I might consider. Uh, I don't know. I don't know just yet. There were a we'll couple things. There were a couple things that came to mind. Maybe we'll go with Wonder Years. Maybe we won't. We'll find out next week. Okay. All right. So. Uh, I guess uh, social media time. If you like this sort of stuff, we have a Facebook page that you can follow. You'll get uh, you'll get belches there. <laughs> I, I had to take a second. Yeah, you'll get updates when we uh, post new stuff. Of course, I mean you'd get that if you subscribe to us on iTunes, and sure. probably Libsyn has a subscription thing. But uh, yeah, if you don't feel like doing that for whatever reason, maybe you don't have iTunes. Uh, that is where you can find new podcasts. You can also find them on Twitter. And on both those services, you can share our stuff with your friends. And, and say, on YouTube. Hey. Oh, also, yes, on YouTube. I always forget uh, about YouTube. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can listen to us on there if you're just sitting at your desktop for a while and want something playing in the background. You can uh, you can do that, too. So, yeah, with that said, thank you guys for listening to another episode of the Bronze Medalist Podcast. I'm Kale. I'm OJ. Congratulations. Congratulations.